Hi, I'm Jordan Klebanoff. I'm an OBGYN resident at Christiana Hospital, and welcome to this week's episode of Pocket Pearls. Welcome to this week's episode of Pocket Pearls. I'm Dr. Jordan Klebanoff. I'm here with two wonderful residents, Dr. Siri Holton and Dr. Carrie Campbell. And today we're going to talk about the medical management of primary postpartum hemorrhage. It's important as an OBGYN resident to have a list of commonly used medications in your armamentarium when dealing with postpartum hemorrhage. And if you haven't watched our first video on the in-room management of hemorrhage, I would recommend going back and watching that video first. Dr. Campbell has some questions for us today. So we initially discussed the management of postpartum hemorrhage, um, but I was wondering kind of what do we choose to use first? ACOG lists a variety of first-line options for the treatment of postpartum hemorrhage and uterine atony. Those uh, treatment options include Pitocin, Methogen, Hemabate, Cytotec, and Dinoprost. So when do I choose to give one agent versus another? At this hospital, that's going to be partly situational because following a vaginal delivery or following a C-section, most of our patients have IV access. They've already been given 10 units of Pitocin. The recommendation to use Pitocin for treatment of hemorrhage secondary to atony is for a bolus of 10 to 40 units. So it's not wrong to give them additional units of Pitocin through their IV. For patients that don't have IV access, you can give 10 units of intramuscular Pitocin. If a patient has been getting Pitocin and is still hemorrhaging despite that medication, then Pitocin may not be a good first line treatment. Okay, so Siri, if they're getting Pitocin already, can I also give Methogen? Yes, all of the first-line urotonics can be given together. Methogen is given as 0.2 milligrams intramuscularly and can be repeated every two to four hours as needed. A patient with known hypertension is a relative contraindication to methogen, but it is not an absolute contraindication. And that reason is because it can increase the blood pressure of the patient. So Jordan, what else could I give? That's a great question. If you don't want to give methogen because the patient's a hypertensive, or if you've given it and it's just not working, you can give hemabate. Hemabate's nice because it can give, be given after a vaginal delivery. At the time of C-section, it can be given directly into the myometrium of the uterus. The dose for hemabate is 0.25 milligrams IM, or intrauterine at the time of a C-section. Hemabate's nice because it can be given multiple times. So it can be given every 15 minutes for up to eight doses. But I would consider that if you're giving hemabate and it's not working, it's probably time to move on to a different agent. So does hemabate have any contraindications? Yes, hemabate is relatively contraindicated in patients that have asthma, hepatic, renal, or cardiac disease. So what if the patient has asthma or hypertension? That's an excellent question. In that specific patient, that would be an appropriate person where you would use Cytotec as your first line treatment. That can be given at a dose of either 800 or 1,000 micrograms rectally. Could we use Dinoprost instead? So here at Christiana, we actually don't carry Dinoprost, um, but if you do have it available, it should be given as either a vaginal or rectal suppository. It's given as a 20 milligram dose, and it can be repeated every two hours. One of the downsides for this medication is that it's stored frozen, so it must actually be thawed before administration. So, do any of these medications have side effects? They do. All of these medications have the potential to cause nausea and vomiting. Pitocin, if given rapidly, can cause hypotension. Methogen can raise blood pressure. Hemabate can aggravate asthma and cause diarrhea, fever, and tachycardia. Dinoprost may cause fever and hypotension, and Cytotec may cause a fever as well. To summarize everything we talked about, ACOG tells us that we have a handful of first-line treatments when we're managing primary postpartum hemorrhage secondary to uterine atony. We can use Cytotec, Hemabate, Pitocin, Methogen, and Dinoprost. One of these medications is not better than the other, but there are things to consider. So for someone who has hypertension, maybe don't use he uh, Methogen as a first-line agent. For someone with asthma, cardiac, or renal disease, maybe don't go to Hemabate. If a patient's been getting Pitocin, that may not be a first good agent to go to. And if one medication isn't working, it's probably time to move on to your next or second line treatment. Join us next week when we talk about the surgical management of postpartum hemorrhage.
<laughs> She's already losing it. She's already losing it. We haven't started speaking. I'm ready. <laughs> We're never going to get done this. So, Siri, if they're getting Pitocin, can I also give meth? <laughs> what? I'm sorry. So, Jordan, what else? <laughs> Take off the glasses. I really want to have him though. You do. I have to go. <laughs> no way. Okay, let me get it together. Can't take him anywhere. Yeah, he's